Hello my soccer universe! Yes, I'm wearing the beauty that I got recently and I'm very very happy that I have it. Uh, and it's the first time that I realize I have so many Premier League teams meanwhile and always trying to fit in the two Eredivisie teams that one Premier League team this time is missing here from, from the world since I'm not wearing anyone. So that's a luxury I have with this type of video and I'm actually quite happy about that, honestly. Okay, full week we have two cup competitions to talk about, we have two league competitions uh, to talk about, all of course in England and in, in the Netherlands. Um, and what are the takeaways? Well, uh, we had FA Cup, a wonderful, totally unexpected uh, tie between Everton and Spurs with overtime and nine goals. What do you want more? One is uh, tempt, tempt to say. In the Premier League, I think we, I already called last week over uh, City just once again underlining with the other best team in the world. Uh, that's done. On the other side, uh, Liverpool, the defending champions, are putting themselves in serious trouble, combusting in the last uh, seven uh, in, within seven minutes late in the game. Um, United also basically said, yeah, uh, City, why don't you take the title with uh, another shocker and Chelsea and West Ham are two teams that we have to be on the lookout, uh, maybe moving up into the top four. Uh, in the Netherlands, we of course had the big cup tie between um, Ajax and PSV. Just giving you a hint who won and uh, then PSV even dropped more points and Ajax also like City seeming rather comfortable in winning the whole thing. Let's start with DFA Cup. Um, just a few takeaways. United with an instantly forgettable 1-0 after overtime win over West Ham. City not having really much trouble uh, against Swansea and I think extending their winning streak to 15. Meanwhile 16. Walker Sterling and Gabriel Jesus by the 50th had the game in the bag. Uh, Swansea with a consolation goal late. Um, then Everton against Spurs. I mean that uh, I a little bit regret, I only saw the highlights, I think I decided to watch uh, Copa del Rey. I a little bit regret it because that was a crazy game. The actually uh, Spurs was definitely for the first half hour probably the better team and had even the lead through Davinson Sanchez. However then in a few minutes of madness, and I sense a theme here, madness, Everton scores three through Calvert Lewin, Richard Leeson, Sigurdsson with a penalty, but Eric Lamela uh, in stoppage time can pull one back, so it's 3 2 at the half for Everton. And Davinson Sanchez can even equalize for Spurs. However, Everton go one again through Richard Leeson, who is getting with the goals again. Uh, but then it was really Spurs uh, pushing for the e e equalizer, and again it's the combination Son to Kane to make it 4 4. However, they cannot find, find a winner, it goes to overtime where Bernard gets the winner for Everton in a game where Spurs actually um, played offensively but did not work. Maybe Mourinho is not too unhappy that it didn't work. Pretty sure he is unhappy about that. Uh, notable also Southampton getting a win over Wolves. And then I actually saw Barnsley against Chelsea because I was really in interested how former last coach um, Ismail is doing and also Dominic Fries and so on. They were doing quite well. I mean, they had two really big chances in the first half to actually take the lead over Chelsea. And then in the 64th, Chelsea scores the goal. I have to say it looked offside. Then they showed the line. It was not offside, but it really looked like I mean, uh, Rhys James makes the pass. And then uh, Tammy Abraham taps it in. It was not a great Chelsea Chelsea performance. I think Barnsley would have des uh, deserved a goal. And of course, I was more on the Barnsley side in this one, given the last connections. But Chelsea moves on in that one. And so we have the following cup ties where I don't have dates yet. We have Bournemouth against Southampton, South Coast. Tower. We have Chelsea against Sheffield United. They will be happy about that. Then we have Everton against Manchester City. And Leicester against Manchester United. I think it gets successively better uh, with the ties. Moving on to the Premier League. I mean, to me, the Premier League week weekend. I mean, City Spurs a few weeks ago would have been the game to look at. But for me, it was all about Leicester against Liverpool. And I have to say that Liverpool actually did not play all that badly 
uh, they were definitely the better team. I think less than the first half had the best, better chances, but Liverpool uh, was the more cohesive, a little bit better team, had more control over the game. Uh, of course, if Jamie Vardy um, had his scoring boots full for Leon, he would not have just hit the um, uh, bar. He would actually have, have scored, but it was definitely Liverpool who had a little bit more. But the longer the game went on, it was in both halves, uh, the more Leicester got into uh, play. They kind of uh, started to figure out Liverpool. However, Liverpool takes the lead in the 67th. Wonderful Bobby Firmino assist. I mean, the way he steps on the ball and then kind of back heels it in. And this was a move that was initiated by Trent Alexander-Arnold, who's getting a lot of flack these days. Uh, because uh, his defensive output did not is not really great, uh, uh, horrible, and then uh, his offensive output, which is what he really thrives on, is definitely uh, not there anymore. And I think it has a lot to do with the Van Dijk in, in, in injury, with uh, kind of having a more dynamic midfield. Now Henderson has to play on, on the back, and I think that really hurts because, let's face it, uh, a wonderful footballer that Thiago is, uh, he does slow down the whole thing a little bit. In any case, Boyfriend, a wonderful assist, Salah slows, slows home. I'm really thinking at this point, wow, Liverpool is on the bounce back, they're gonna win this one. And then the whole thing combusts. I mean, there was this uh, crazy scene where first, uh, was it a penalty? Didn't, what, uh, was, what was not a penalty? Uh, where then a free kick for Madison is given just outside of the box, then the free kick is taken, uh, the goal finds his way in, 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 into the box with no player really touching it and then um, the goal is given offside and then look at it and then you see Firmino's foot just when the ball is played. I mean one of those, you cannot, this foot control, this is just crazy. Uh, there are so many less less of his head but you know Firmino's foot is clearly down there. I know, ladder of the law, it's, uh, it's the right call. It just looked wrong, wrong to me. So in the 78th Madison gets the equal so, and I'm again thinking okay and then what happened as a long ball played that uh, Kabak who played uh, could have probably for a devil but Al Alison comes out storming and I don't know what's the communication issue either one has speaking issues or the other one has uh, hearing issues but they collide and the ball comes to Vardy who can uh, run into an empty net that again goalkeeping mistake and again Liverpool uh, being on the receiving end of a big goalkeeping mistake and this is not what you expect from Alisson to, to be honest. And then uh, Wilfried Ndidi intercepts a nice ball, uh, a, a ball in, mid, in midfield, plays the uh, ball to Harvey Barnes and it's 3-1. Leicester having figured out in the last, let's say 20 minutes, they really have figured out the game plan of Liverpool and uh, pounced on that and get a 3-1 win that maybe in the end was deserved, although for most of the game I think Liverpool was the team that was more in control, but hey, it's goals that count. And so Liverpool really in trouble and Leicester with a huge win. I think it was the first win uh, over Liverpool, at least in a long, 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 long time. City against Spurs, I mean, uh, <laughs> total dom dominance. I, if I've seen the goal, I mean, the first was a rotary penalty, a penalty goal for City. I think this was the one thing that was missing. They uh, had Spurs in back. Yes, Kane hit uh, the crossbar early on with, with a free kick, which may have sent the game a different way. Honestly, I don't really think so. I think that um, City would have steamrolled uh, Spurs uh, non nonetheless because it just does not seem to work for A for Spurs and for City. They are just su uh, such a machine at, uh, at the moment. And then the player that is scoring like free, uh, at free wheel at the moment, Gundogan, after Sterling assist, makes it 2 0 in the 50th and then a 60th. Ederson with a kick out uh, basically across the entire pitch, and Gundogan just uh, wiggles past the defenders and puts puts in it. That was a great assist, and this was everything City can hit you just like that in no time. Lay down Spurs, tried to a little bit, but honestly. I think Bale had a half chance, but it could have been more. I think City utterly dumped on it and said, okay, we are winning this league by a canter. Um, what other games? I mean, Southampton, Wolves, two, two, two interest goals. I thought the winner by Wolves was great. West Brom, Manchester United. I mean, 1-1. One, one. What is Man U doing? Really, what is United doing? 
uh, they found themselves down in the second minute through the Anya, then uh, of course trying to get back in the game, Bruno Fernandes with a really really nice nice goal back uh, back to the net and then uh, with the foot in, that was a great great goal, but they cannot find a winner. They had a call possibly for a penalty, um, Maguire late on hits the post, so maybe there could be the win, but on the other side it was not a great performance. Great performance though from Arsenal for a change, uh, with Aubameyang scoring a hat-trick, completely routing Leeds up until the 47th minute, but Leeds makes a comeback. And it got a little bit scary at the end, but in the end it's a 4-2 win. Fulham with a surprise 2-0 win at Everton, and then yesterday I uh, didn't see anything of this game, but West Ham's win over Sheffield United, rather impressive 3-0, West Ham really being the surprise team of the season. And then Chelsea 2-0 uh, over Newcastle, Giroud and Werner, uh, 31st and Thursday night getting that win, putting Newcastle in a whole lot more trouble, and Chelsea now moving slightly up. Because if we look now at the table, Chelsea is in fourth spot. And given the quality of the squad, you're kind of tempted to say, yeah, probably they will all stay there. Look at the chances for Champions League. Liverpool now only in sixth, but they're still third favorite to make it to the Champions League. But it's a little bit of an uphill struggle because Everton has two games in hand, Aston Villa have two games in hand, Spurs have a game in hand. There's a lot of pressure coming from below and you really need to take care of the teams up front as well. Um, other than that, City 97%, I mean, it's a done deal. A game in hand and seven points ahead. It is even more dominant than what Atletico Madrid is showing in uh, La Liga. And for the bottom, with the win over Everton, Fulham may have a prayer. And it might be Newcastle going, going down, which uh, in one way would be a shame, but the way they're playing... They probably deserve going going down over Fulham uh, too, to be honest, but I would hate to see that. But yeah, one of the two black white teams probably uh, will go down. I think Sheffield United looks... They had a little resurgence, but at the moment, yeah, you, you don't know. Uh, as I said, we can adjust the table if we uh, do so. I mean, it's not a foregone conclusion that Everton will win those two games because one is against Manchester City and, and so on. But if we just take the current uh, points average, Everton is ahead of Liverpool. So Liverpool at the moment only in seventh. And you see the big red bar. We have to go way down to see such a similar bar with Brighton, uh, potentially Fulham and definitely Sheffield United. Um, Everton is a very positive surprise. I'm actually surprised that uh, West Ham United has a better rating than Everton. And so um, West Ham United is not that so much of a surprise according to my stats, but to me, honestly, I didn't expect West Ham there. Um, expected standings, yes, Leicester now going into the top four ahead of Chelsea, Liverpool barely hanging on. And this is the uh, where the old excitement in the Premier League comes from. The title race is gone. Then it's all about the Champions League spots, where there's really uh, four teams fighting for three spots. West Ham and Spurs seem to be out of it. This is all Europa League stuff. Maybe Arsenal and Everton can go in there as well. And as I said for the bottom, uh, we know Sheffield United, West Brom down, Newcastle, Fulham, probably for the last place. Palace is also a team that could get in there. Have to see. I Probably not, but we have to see about that. In the midweek, we have two makeup games. We start with a makeup game from round 17 between Burnley and Fulham uh, on Wednesday, and then the late one is Everton against Manchester City. So uh, that's the game in hand that City have, and then they will have probably a 10 point lead, and we can literally hand the trophy to City at this moment. Um, and then on the weekend, I'm just looking, uh, it's the Derby Liverpool against Everton. That is a big game for both of them, and I'm sure that uh, neither side is actually excited to have this game. West Ham United against Spurs is an uh, interesting one. I also think that Aston Villa against Leicester City, I'm afraid that Arsenal Manchester City will be uh, kind of a no contest game. Uh, although Arsenal has a limited MNA in the FA Cup, but I don't see anything but a City winning quite easily there. Um, we move to the Netherlands, we're in the Dutch Cup. Uh, Ajax beat PSV 2-1. I didn't see anything of that game. Unfortunately, Aller scoring the two goals uh, midway through the first half in the 19th and the 24th. Then an own goal by Timba gives PSV a prayer. I don't know whether it was tight or, or, or not, but 
most important is Ajax moves on to the next round. We had also two games that were slated for uh, this week moved because we had the big snowstorms and whatever come, come, come in. So they are played this week uh, between Neck and uh, Venlo and Herrenveen and Feyenoord. Uh, and the bad news continued for PSV because they played lowly Den Haag, found themselves uh, down in 27th after they had missed a penalty. So at the halftime it was Den Haag lead, they turned the game around. Daniel Mullen, who is actually in pretty good form, scores twice in the 51st and 7th and 6th, but then they give up a very, very late equalizer and PSV only manages a draw and that was made for someone to scoop in or uh, you know get closer and of course for Ajax to take a, a bigger distance and yes they got it. Uh, David Klaassen in the 14th over Heracles and then uh, Sebastian Lea puts the game uh, away uh, and this time Klaassen assisting him. So those two are really good uh, additions to the Ajax squad. Um, we also had AZ beating Herrenveen 3-1 uh, and Feyenoord with a huge 5-0 win. Tumstra just before the half and then in the second half it, uh, the wheels came off. Linsen, Sinistera, Berghuis with a penalty in the 63rd was 4-0 uh, and 83rd. Uh, Kocku uh, makes it 5-0. So uh, looking at the table, I said it, are Ajax even more favorite. Uh, they are the class of, of the league. Also have having a game in hand, only six point lead, but uh, with that it is probably a nine point lead, and Ajax is in in the clear. I think PSV also will rather soft uh, have a softish landing in the Champions League. But at that now moving up, with test going going a little bit down. I'm not sure if Feyenoord we, uh, could probably join the party there as well. Uh, if we just we just see that Ajax's lead is even more substantial, uh, Feyenoord still ahead of AZ though. Uh, let's look at the expected standings as I said, it's Ajax and PSV 1 and 2 and then AZ and Feyenoord at the moment uh, going for this third spot but that's not a Champions League spot, that would be for the Europa League and then they have this playoff system in the Netherlands where there's a whole uh, lot in there. Uh, the next weekend uh, we have PSV against Vitesse, that's a pretty big one, I, I would say 20 Feyenoord, yeah, looks interesting at Ajax plays against Sparta, so that's what we have in the Netherlands. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, please drop a line below, uh, fill, me, fill me in, fill all the gaps that I had or what you thought about the games this weekend, uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so and I will talk to you soon, bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!